Hello, I am incredibly bored, as you also probably are during the current pandemic, so I've decided to talk about my favourite subject. That's right, films. I have a degree in film, a degree in writing, and currently work freelance in the film industry. Check IMDb for my latest credits, or don't, whatever. Everyone has opinions on films, these are just mine, views expressed are obviously my own, and are in no way a reflection on how hard a crew worked on a certain film, or how any company or studio may feel about certain films. I try and go through the fairly simple Goodreads method of rating, 5 for amazing, 4 for I really liked it, 3 for I liked it, 2 for it was okay, watchable, and 1 for unwatchable, unentertaining, absolute trash. This week's theme is random 70s movies that I have been watching. Bear in mind, I'm watching on a laptop, so the lack of big screen may skew my ratings slightly. I started my week with something that's been on my list for a while, The Wicker Man. I liked it. I thought I could see many an inspiration for Midsummer and that kind of cult horror ilk. I thought the film was at its weakest with the random dancing numbers, but greatly enjoyed the lead actor, Edward Woodward's investigations into the creepy goings-on. I didn't realise where I recognised him from, but a quick Google search showed me that he was in Edgar Wright's Hot Fuzz, which again is another film greatly inspired by this movie. Christopher Lee was menacing, and I really want to go as Lord Summer Isle one Halloween. I watched Don't Look Now, which I expected to like a lot more than I did. I think just knowing the name Nicholas Roeg and having greatly enjoyed his film Walkabout, I wasn't expecting it to be as slow as it was, and as an absolute yellow belly when it comes to horror. I had more trepidation than I should really give the movie credit for in the darker scenes. For that reason, I thought it was only okay. The Island of Dr Moreau is the kind of film that is probably ripe to be given a nice VFX heavy makeover, but are the themes of scientific experimentation as relevant now as they were back in the 70s or in the 90s when another version of the story was told amidst all the cloning and Dolly the Sheep malarkey? H.G. Wells is obviously the grandfather of science fiction for a reason, and that reason being amazing stories. The film, starring open-shirted Basil Exposition from Austin Powers, was well acted, even if the makeup and costume budget was a little ropey. Clearly, they spent a lot more money on the gorgeous location, which meant that the island could become its own character. The palette of the landscape brings to mind the green and overbearingness of that other classic 70s movie, Aguirre, the Wrath of God. Whilst not a classic, I did have a whale of a time watching The Cat from Outer Space on a popular streaming site. It kept the attention, and there are definite hints of E.T. the extraterrestrial in Jake, the titular cat. Nice one for the kids. There'll be no snobbery from me, not even an upturned nose, but it does bear mentioning the age difference between the two love interests, humans for those that wonder. Nursing a hangover and watching a classic Pam Greer black exploitation movie is what comes to mind when anyone mentions 70s movies, and coffee is a perfect example. Butt kicking femme fatale coffee is great, violent, but with genuine real world undertones. The speech from Brunswick towards the very end of the movie is typical politician talk and a real lesson for all screenwriters. Give your villains a good backstory, don't let them be one dimensional. There's a reason Tarantino was obsessed with Pam Greer. And this film, and Foxy Brown, cement why she's the poster girl for the genre. The best film I watched this week, which die-hard film fanatics will hate me for saying I haven't seen before, is Assault on Precinct 13. I've had the music in my head all week, and for that reason, I will give this 4.5 out of a possible 5 thumbs up. Clearly inspired by Night of the Living Dead, and then going on to inspire Shaun of the Dead, this film, with its depiction of L.A. gangs as faceless, unrelenting villains, is a definite part of the zombie genre in all but name. Even I wanted Napoleon to find someone who had... got a smoke. But I am gutted we didn't get to find out how he got his nickname. A great character and another alumni from the black exploitation genre, Austin Stoker shined as the lieutenant in charge of a tricky situation. The other best film I watched this week... Yes, there's two. I make the rules is The French Connection, which again is a thriller that changed the genre forever. Surely every drunken cop with a mean streak is a rip-off of Gene Hackman's Jimmy Doyle. Spare a thought for Roy Schneider, who here is dwarfed by Hackman's gritty portrayal 
and later in the 70s was dwarfed by an actual shark. I would like to, in particular, note the train chase scene, which with its fast intercutting is a stalwart example of pace and thrill that could rival a whole Fast and Furious movie. Bonus film rating. Not a 70s movie, but set in the world of 70s movies, Barbarian Sound Studio was an insight into the world of a Foley artist. I'm still not certain what I watched, or what happened towards the end, but Toby Jones really shined as the lead. His mannerisms, while small, are what all actors should aim for. We, as an audience, relate to him, even if we have nothing in common with him. He's an everyman, but as the film goes on, we think, and we may be wrong, that not all is as it seems. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any film recommendations. I genuinely will put them in this notebook and get round to them eventually. Honestly, Island of Dr Moreau and Barbarian Sound Studio have been in here for over three years each. Stay safe and wash your hands.